Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode in my Microsoft Entre Deep Dive series. Um, we are more than halfway now, well a lot more than halfway in this series. Um, we've looked at a lot of topics and, and we're currently, um, this is going to be the last episode in the Protect and Secure um, sort of topic. We've, had, we've covered a lot of ground. I hope people are liking the format. Um, because I'm trying to be more active in the portal, trying to dig deeper into the portal and show you some some real use cases and some you know talk about some best practices, um, rather than just going about theory. I have touched on a little bit of theory, but trying to spend more time in the portal and trying more practical. Um, so I hope everybody is enjoying that. Please you know, leave me a comment, give me some feedback. At the same time, I'm doing some giveaways as well. So I've, again, for those who have seen my packed book uh, tech review series. Um, obviously I've collected loads of uh, packed books while I've been reading them and reviewing them so I mean they are second hand but they're all literally hardly read I've only read most of them once so um, I am doing giveaways that I did one in my last episode not going to have one in this episode um, but I hope people are enjoying those as well uh, so let's jump straight into the presentation so as I mentioned today's uh, video is, is part three of the topics let's do a bit of a recap um, so this is still the Microsoft Entre Deep Dive series. Let's do a bit of a recap of what the last episode was about. So it was part two of the Protect and Secure topic. We spoke about the Identity Secure Score. We then showed multi-factor authentication settings. And we also then finished off by looking at authentication methods. And again, throughout, I kind of spoke about some best practices, use case, my own experience there. So in this final part of this topic, so this is part three of Protect and Secure, as your actor, we're going to look at password reset first of all, then look at something called custom attributes, and finally look at risky activities. I think we've already kind of touched on risky activities, so there's not much to kind of retell with that, but I will go through that again. And again, as always, I'll be talking about best practices and some use cases. Um, so, as we mentioned, the first topic today is password reset, so let's jump into the portal and take a look. <laughs> Welcome back. Here we are back in the Microsoft Entre Admin Center and we're all the way down here, protect and secure. And down at the bottom here, password reset. So here, first of all, we can, this is where we enable it. So we can either select um, a group of users, a user or, you know, select a group in this case. And, and again, always recommend doing it for a group or we can set it for everybody. Um, so I'm going to leave it in none for now. But as well as the sort of passwords, we can also look at sort of the authentication methods we can use for password reset. So, you know, we can specify the number of, path of methods required to reset. So this is, again, a little caveat up at the top of warning. Authentication methods for single self-service password reset and signing can now be managed to one converge policy. Um, bit of a warning, just a bit of a, uh, not a warning, but more of an update there for, for you there. And this is just, again, defining a number of alternate methods. Um, I've set mine to one, but gone probably best practice and I'd recommend probably doing two. Um, and these are the methods that are available. Um, again, I'm grayed out for mobile app or notification, but we can have mobile app code, email, mobile phone, phone, office phone, or security questions. So I've got email and mobile phone enabled. But again, depending on what your requirements are, you can select what you need. Again, some of these I wouldn't recommend. Like security questions is quite old school, and I think these can be quite hacked if I'm guessed. Probably the most too. So, well, the, the notification one, if it wasn't grayed out. Um, select two, it'll, it'll come on. So if you're selecting two, really, um, I'd have mobile app notification as one, um, and then mobile app code as another as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with email or phone, um, but again, we're not enabling it. So, but yeah, so you can specify the, the number of authentication methods and what they are available to users. Registration here, so you can require users to register when signing in. So that is enabled for me. So this designates whether unregistered users are prompted to register their own authentication information when they sign in for the first time. If it's yet to know, administrators can have to manually specify the necessary password reset authentication information. If it's set to yes, the user has to do it. Um, so it's a number of days before users are asked to reconfirm their authentication information, so it's 180 days. Um, so again, depending on what your security policy is for password reset, um, Again, I read somewhere, it might be an NCSE guideline, don't quote me on that, but um, I read that it's probably best to have like a really complex password, like 14 characters, alphanumeric, 
but then had they set to like 365 so once a year but i might be wrong around that but that's the last sort of security update that i heard or generally in the industry but again your security policy should define this already notifications again we can notify users on the password reset so we can notify admins as well when a password is reset uh, i think it's important to notify users don't know if admins want to know every time a, a password resets so i'll probably leave that now uh, we can do some customizations here around the the help component help desk linking or email and url and this is for on-premises integration here so um so it looks like that so this is um you need you need right back password right back for this to be enabled i don't have it enabled on my tenant as you can see i've got jd connect sync working but i don't have the um right back um i don't have the jd connect provisioning agent um, so that's not detected so again you can manage those settings from here and, and, and sort of configure those as well and finally the administrative uh, administrative policy so um, this is basically defining what all, everything that's already set so if self service password reset enabled yes number of methods required to reset two um, methods available um, sms mobile phone office phone and mobile uh, app code and finally, as we see in the activity, audit logs and usage and etc. down at the bottom here. So these are all the settings we can do for password reset. Again, it's quite broad. Um, again, I made some recommendations. I, you know, I recommend having having two password uh, methods, uh, as well as having you know, I'd enable um, I'd enable a mobile app or notification, not really email or mobile phone. Um, so that is password reset. Let's jump back into the presentation and see what the next topic is. Welcome back. The next topic we are going to look at is custom attributes. So let's jump back into the portal and see what this is. Welcome back to the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. And here we are in um, custom attributes. So we're almost at the bottom of that protect and secure uh, topic. Um, so first of all, let me just quickly explain what this is. So custom security attributes are uh, currently in preview, um, but they are um, essentially attributes in active Azure Active Directory. Uh, where businesses can they can specify certain attributes or key value pairs and that you can define and assign to Azure AD objects. And so these attributes can be used to store information, categorize objects, or even enforce sort of fine grained access control over specific Azure resources. Um, and so custom security attributes can be used with your Azure attribute based access control uh, or ABAC as well. So um, little, a bit of an explanation as to, as to what it actually is. Now, first thing to be, 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 you need to make sure that it gives us a bit of a three steps here about how you can actually configure this. So the first thing is you need to have the right permissions. Now, check, you need to first of all, check that you're assigned the correct role. So it's the attribute definition administrator role. Now, by default, the global admin or privileged admin role do not have that permission. So that's a bit, you'd expect global admin to have it. It's like, you know, the, the God account, as some people call it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have that by default. So you have to make sure you are assigned the attribute definition administrator role. If you're not straight away, that'll be grayed out and that'll be grayed out. You won't be able to do either. Um, so obviously I've assigned myself that role earlier. Um, so I can have a click down here or I can click up here to add an attribute set. And then once it loads, I can give it a name. So I get attribute. Uh, oh, invalid. Let's see what the requirements are. Actually, so it must be 12 digits. Um, let's call it attribute A. Stop being awkward. Attribute A. Give it a description. Demo, fair dues. Now, maximum number of attributes. So, maximum number of attributes for the attribute set. Maximum is five, number is 500. Um, so, let's just leave it at 25. Click on add. And now we can actually go into here um, and again within this so we've got active attributes um, deactivated attributes and we can roll administrators so again here we can actually um, add attributes so attribute name oh it would be helpful if i could spell view one give it a description Demo. So, is it either going to be a Boolean, integer, or string? So, basically, we're adding a custom security attribute uh, to the directory that you can later assign to an object. Uh, so, let's leave it a string. 
allow multiple values to be assigned, click yes or no, allow all the predefined values to be assigned. So with the allow multiple values to be assigned, select yes to allow multiple values to be assigned to this attribute. Uh, allow only predefined, so select yes to require that this attribute only be assigned values from predefined value list. So again, very much depends on what your use case is, what, what configurations you're going to put in here. Once you've configured that, go back into here, we'll add that. You can also then add, um, or you can reactivate, deactivate attributes. And finally, you can actually um, assign, you can look at the roles that are assigned here as well. So um, these are the roles that are assigned to these attributes. Um, and obviously these, role, these attributes need these roles to be able to do their function. Um, so there, that's what we've covered, um, custom attributes in a bit of detail there and how you can activate them, how you can configure them, what permissions you need, what roles you need. Um, so let's jump back into the presentation for the final time in this topic and see what we're going to cover last. Welcome back for the final time in this episode and this topic. We are the final um, final feature that we're going to cover as part of the secure and protect uh, topic that we're going to talk about. This is part three of that. Um, so we're actually going to look at risky activities now. So I have covered this in the portal already in a little bit of detail, but let's jump back into the portal and uh, go through that again. Here we are back in the Microsoft Entra Admin Center and down here with risky activities. And we had a look at this earlier. So this is sort of the report area. So you look at risky users here. So this is essentially a list of any users that have been defined as, as, as risky. Um, so there's my, um, worryingly my admin one, and the actual, the on-premises actual directory synchronization service account as well, which is deemed at risk. Um, and I can then go into these and look at more detail as to, um, as to why, so I can click on, it tells me the basic info, recent risky sign-ins, detection is not linked to the sign-in, looks at the risk history, um, can it, can it just unfamiliar sign-in um, was the activity. Uh, so again, you can look at um, user risk, uh, user sign-ins, you can look at user risky sign-ins, you can look at user risk detections. Um, so all these bits we can look at for a specific um, uh, risky user sign-in. Um, so confirm. So again, I could actually confirm the user's compromise and block them, or I could set it to you know, reset password as well from here. Um, I'm not going to do that on my account because I'm actually using it right now. Um, so yeah, if we had a, you know if we had some users that were compromised, we could set them to compromise there and lock them down. Uh, and again, as we go down here, you've got risky workload identities. Again, I've not got any, but this is this is, you can see from here. You'll show you the service principle, the service principle ID, the app ID, the risk state, and the, the last time it was updated. So this is more for um, any identities that are attached to any application, so you know, more of like the service principles that might be a risk. And this is the risky sign in, so we've got risky users. This is risky sign in, so it kind of tells us if any sort of risky signs have been detected. We can filter, so it's you know, uh, uh, so it shows us the uh, day over the last month or week or days, um, local day, it shows a risk day. We can again filter that so it can show us more activity. And finally, the risk detection. So again, another list where we can look at risky detections. And again, nothing found here, but it's user detections. Again, we can look at filtering the, you know, more days. Let's look at the last 90 days. See if that comes up with anything. We can use filters to show more or less information there. Um, so that's kind of recapping what we looked at risky, risky um, identities and, and risky users earlier. Um, I think it's called risky, uh, yeah, risky activity. So yeah, we just recovered that again. Uh, so thank you for watching again. I'm really enjoying this. Is really good. identity in general. I am for those who know me and look at my know my my, my sort of um, content. I do like doing around Azure Active Directory uh, topic. I do enjoy. So this is something I'm enjoying doing. Uh, it's the first time in a while I've done a series on my own. As well, you might remember I've done recent these series with Dwayne Natwick and Ahmed Sajid back to back. So it's nice to do a series on my own, have a bit of me time. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope everybody's enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying the giveaways. I'll do another giveaway in my next episode. Uh, so um, all in the description, I've got uh, the links to my uh, my socials and a link to some of the topics we've spoken about here. So the risky activities, the custom attributes and the password reset. So some Microsoft Learn doc links in there, um, as well as the link to the last episode if you want to recap that. So thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.